Uh, we had a lot of uh, technical difficulties. Nathan and Efren are participating in a wild competition where they have to follow a set of instructions to essentially create a mini assembly line. What you guys do is absolutely mind-blowing to me. The journey here has been kind of a little bit of a whirlwind. Little do they know, the instructions are incorrect. We'll have to see if that throws them off course or if they can sniff out the trick and finish in their 10-hour time limit. What is Megatronics? It's kind of complicated. In essence, Megatronics is the combination of three things. It's mechanical. <laughs> Electrical engineering? Electrical engineering. What was the third thing? It's computer science. If you make one mistake, uh, it, will, it really ruin everything because you have to have everything precise. You ever wonder how Amazon can get those products shipped to you the same day? That's Megatronics. The best way to think about it is like those factories with the that have the belts that put parts together. As if one engineering topic wasn't complicated enough to combine three different topics into one, it really makes it a challenge for anybody that's interested in this field. And so you guys with Megatronics are programming those robots to make sure they're hitting their mark every single time. Yes, sir. But it also makes them somebody that is very high in demand because of their knowledge in all three areas. Yeah, we use it every single day. Got you it. can do anything with it. Think of something as simple as an elevator down to alarm systems, air conditioning systems, smart home automation is all Megatronics. Wow, that's Megatronics. It's a gift, as long as it's Deliver on time. I think we're probably the youngest competitors here. These boys just finished ninth grade in high school. That's insane. So we're from New Mexico. We're the only competitors from the state. So, I mean, that's a freshman in high school. In the Mechatronics competition, we use pieces of equipment like our Festo Mech Labs and our Festo Skills Conveyors, which allow the students to kind of build small scale assembly lines so that they can learn how to put them together, electrically wire them, pneumatically, and also program them. What got you guys into Megatronics. I like engineering. It allows them to train on it to be fully prepared before they enter the workforce. We got a trade school at my high school that I really wanted to get into. Because we teach it at a very introductive level to the students, they're at a upper medium level just because of the amount of time that they've been able to dedicate to this subject. You guys are literally competing against other teams and other, you know, talent. Most of them are like 18, 17, we're only 15. Yeah. Just completed their first year of learning about these subjects. We've been making it harder and harder each year. The competition is getting more complex, but at the same time, the skills of the participants are increasing substantially. You guys must feel pretty good about what you know to, to come in as freshmen. Well, it's basically my teacher. Okay. Yeah, our yeah. teacher. So he saw things in you that said, I think you guys compete and maybe do well. Yeah, both, both of us were pretty much at the top of our class. And so he just asked us if we want to go compete. I thought it was cool because I got to get out of school for four days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very optimistic. Not like that, but to, to walk in your room and see all this equipment, all these companies showing off some of the top of the line, state-of-the-art machinery, not to mention the robots and the and mechanical uh, engineering things that actually work in a warehouse in an assembly line. They're young, so wherever they take this, this knowledge, whatever industry they move into, the skills that they learn is gonna make them not only employable, but promotable. Now that we know what we're looking at, let the competition begin. Our competition today started off with a red test. There's a little how-to guide at the top that tells you exactly how to fill the thing out. Dude, I had one evil professor, bro, like, for one assignment, he tried to mess with all, it was 50 questions, A or B, true or false, all of them were A. That circle. That's like the seventh like truth in a row. I was like, surely there's a, a false. And I put a couple false throughout. Do not check. Still got like a 94, but I was that so mad. Like, I had like C, 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 so I just went all C. You gotta lock it in, so. All right, hold tight. We're gonna go through the roll call in just a second. The test was pretty complicated. I was kind of nervous when I started my test because my partner finished like five minutes. There's a lot of safety questions and some other questions that we haven't learned yet. Help us spread the word about the skilled trades. The best thing you can do is like this video and subscribe to our channel. After the test, we're gonna have to build basically an automated factory. Nathan and Efren have to follow a meticulously prepared set of instructions to create their own mini assembly line. The students have been given a task uh, to assemble their what are called mech labs, kind of a tool that they use to learn mechatronics. One mistake, and they'll have to troubleshoot as fast as possible to finish with just enough time. I'm really good at the wiring. 
what makes the competition kind of special is the majority of the time students are actually working with a mech lab already assembled. Now it's completely taken apart. They tell them, we, you need to create a piece of equipment that does this, this, and this within this time frame. And their task is going to be to put it all together with all the loose components that they have and then also write the program that goes along with it so the equipment can function independently on its own. They're pretty deep in the competition right now. Um, I can see that they have a lot of their components up. All of those components that they see that, that are up on their stations right now start off completely disassembled. Almost everything has to go right in every single wire, every capacitor, every yeah. everything for you guys to, to, to anybody to shine. Yeah. So everything's been put together, everything's been assembled. You've had wires run, uh, pneumatic air ran around different places connected to the computer. But there's. I'm guessing in this particular industry, so many things can sort of not go right. So our instructions weren't completely accurate. The diagram is not fully right at all. And so we don't really know what to do. They take a complete system from the bottom up, from nothing. They just, they get all the necessary elements to build a system in the mechanical portion, the electrical portion. Once they have the system pre-assembled, they have to go run some troubleshooting and then they go to the next level, which is the programming and the integration of the whole solution. In the early stages of the competition, our competitors are beginning to see the problem with the instructions. We have some extra components in some of the circuit diagrams are missing to see how they do troubleshooting wise. So right here, there's four like that. Here. And so it's going to run off down here. Some of them are catching in and some of them are not. What do you say? See how the drawing has four holes here? Yeah. And one there, one here. It's fine. So it's going to be here, not not like this drawing. It's what you said. It's going to be reversed. It's fine. However, we're you, not going to be judged on that. However, it separates. It doesn't matter. It just has to separate. Okay. Yeah. So the okay, cause the drawing doesn't match the parts. When you go to assemble, you'll see how it can go together. Yeah. Right. All it needs to do is separate. That's all it has to do. Our parts don't match the diagram. The instructions that they gave us aren't the same as the parts that they gave us. So it's not just going to look different. Since the diagram is kind of different from what they gave us, some of the parts are like backwards. So we have to find solutions for it. With the time taken away, the team cannot afford any hiccups. So it's like taking apart an engine from a 60 block galaxy, putting it back together, but also make it do turn, something different. Turn into a, a, yeah. a transformer. Do you guys feel like you're going to win? They're using the equipment for something that it, not that it wasn't originally designed for, but it's originally like a scripted, this is the things that this station does. They had a bunch of solutions. Yeah, they had a, yeah, random things and random spots. The equipment, the components that they use, they're applicable to anywhere. So there's a lot of trial and error with this uh, thing. A hundred percent. Yeah. Something tells me you may not be pleased with how things turned out today. So what went wrong? Uh, our computer crashed. Computer crash, uh, we lost. In the middle of judging? You no, know, like it was uh, 30 minutes left. I'm not 100% sure what's going on. I don't know if it's a communication issue as far as the computer actually communicating with the equipment. We had five hours to do a competition and we were four and a half hours into the competition and our computer crashed.
Bye. Fortunately, we had saved about half our project, but we hadn't saved the other half. So we did four and a half hours worth of work in 30 minutes. We did finish. It was just that motor um, not going the direction we wanted, and we tried almost every solution we thought of, and uh, it still wouldn't work. So the diagram really messed us up. So the way it's set up is this is supposed to be on this side, and this is supposed to be on this side. We can't put it on this way because this naturally goes that way. I know that the system can work. So when I teach them, I say, all right, I need you to create a, a program or I need you to create a piece of equipment that does this, this, and this. I know it's possible. A lot of the teams switched it around and put it on opposite ways and it worked for them, but we didn't think we were allowed to do that. It's not working, it's not working. Well, you got to start back. Because it's running backwards, we had to turn it upside down. Yeah, it was different side. All right, here it is. It can't stay on its own upside down, so we had to zip tie it and then use plot tires to counteract it. To use like as a weight so yeah. we could like balance it. Dude, it's hot. Feel it, it's hot. It's because we've been trying to go up for the longest time. Start following your flow chart. Is everything in your electrical connected to your mechanical, connected to your pneumatic? It all has to work together. It can work. And if it's not working, you gotta go back. If you mess up one part, the whole thing messes up, and like there's like a million parts that you're just trying to do as fast as you can. We tried our best, but still, it was a trial and error. Top three? No. no. Before our computer crashed, we were in like the top 10. Top. And we were going up, and then our computer crashed, and we were at the bottom. And then 30 minutes, and they gave us a little extra time, so top maybe. Fun. Top 20, yeah. I don't think if there's any better on the job training than exactly what happened to you because that's a real life situation. The pressure must be insane. It's kind of messed up because it's upside down. It's supposed to come back up. So if yeah. you look, I barely had to touch it. Yeah. So judging has happened. And you probably saw some of the other teams had a more successful finish. Two. Other than that, I think we did better than all the rest of them. Your motor technically does work, it's just not moving in the forward fashion and everything else functions the way it's supposed to. So you actually guys got really far and did really well. Mm -hmm. like, really? So, yes, we did. I thought we were going to get like last place. We still got a chance. Not a very good one, but it's better than I thought it was. anxiously to hear the results for their hard work. Let's hear it. Not the outcome we wanted to see. But these guys did a fantastic job working through and overcoming unexpected challenges under high stakes pressure. I know the last thing you want to hear is, you know, failure is just the greatest thing can happen to you, but it really does. That's how you learn lessons. That's how you prepare yourself for the next competition or, uh, or task. The future is looking bright for these two. They're getting real world training for high paying careers in an industry that is growing by tens of billions of dollars annually. They can use all of these skills they're learning across multiple amazing industries. Say we're 10 years down the road. Where do you see yourself and where do you hope to be? I feel like I have my own business and uh, try to see what I can get from that. Who knows what it is, but we'll see. I want to be an automation technician. And after I get my journeyman's license, I'd like to become a manager. You've already sourced it out. You know what you're yeah. looking for. Okay. What's crazy about these guys is they're only freshmen. They have three more years, three more chances to earn their way to a top spot on the podium. Well, I'm excited to see where you guys go from here. I'm also excited to see how well you take this setback and turn it into probably your next success.